Our, our next speaker is Thierry Coge, uh, who's an uh, Associate Principal Scientist at the Chemistry Innovation Centre uh, for AstraZeneca in Sweden. Uh, Thierry began as a physical uh, chemist with a PhD in, in 1998 and moved on to work at UCB as a medicinal comp chemist. Um, he moved later to the University of Lille and uh, completed a Master's in Drug Design before moving back to AstraZeneca as a uh, computational chemist, working in the computational chemistry group in Mon Mongol. Um, he's been involved in a number of uh, important projects in global chemoinformatics, uh, analyzing compound collections, uh, lead, supporting lead generation and so forth. And it's his talk today around compound collections that we look forward to hearing. Thierry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction. And th thank you for inviting me to present this talk about new way of accessing new chemical space. Some, like some other speaker, I had some trouble with the, the title suggested by Rob Dom, Dom, so I just completely changed it. <laughs> and uh, I think this one, is, 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 we'll see that cover more the overall uh, presentation I, I want to make. But you will see, I hope, a good match, a good overlap between what I will present and the uh, initial uh, title. So probably most of you knows about the challenge we are facing in drug discovery. So in one hand, the number of approved drug with respect to the R&D spending is decreasing with the time. And uh, so we need to spend more money to get less drug approved. <coughs> there is an article in Nature Review Drug Discovery where the authors uh, observe that most majority of drugs that are approved the last 30 years are acts on target for which there was already a drug approved for. So they observe some peak of innovation, but they say it's still uh, below the expectation. So, and also there is this uh, trends, current trends to reduce the, the investment in internal research, like site closure all around the world. <laughs> And uh, so many people uh, uh, believe that we need to find new ways of doing drug discovery. And for AstraZeneca, like many others, uh, a pharma, it's clear that uh, one way to solve the problem would be to s increase collaboration. So we always collaborate with academic group, with CRO, but now we need to push this to another level, another dimension. So. Uh, AstraZeneca has uh, put in place some uh, strategy for early discovery partnering. So I will not talk here about late stage uh, and licensed compounds, just early uh, drug discovery. So the remit of this strategy is to try to find a new and validated target, biological target to cure disease. It's also to access through collaboration uh, new chemistry, new, new molecules, the, that uh, can complement that to what we have already in our compound collection. So in other words, try to, to, ac uh, to access new chemical space uh, that, for example, are not accessible uh, by our own, own chemistry uh, expertise. And also we need to deliver lead optimization proje project as usual, but maybe in new ways. I will explain this more in the next slide. So it, this is quite a busy slide, but it's quite easy to, to understand. On the right panel here, you see some example of strategy where we want to find new target for our compounds. So for example, we, uh, this is one of my, the reasons of AstraZeneca uh, to be present here. Uh, I'm just a uh, representative person, is the, the work we do for the DNDNI. So we screen our compound for target related to neglected disease. Uh, AstraZeneca, like other pharma company, are part of this IMI Lead Factory Consortium, where all the members uh, uh, share a subset of their compound collection into a huge screening collection that are accessible as a compound source for the different partners, but also for person outside. So if you are an academic group with an innovative target, you can submit your target and get these uh, screening resources. And uh, here we have also some collaboration with group like screening center like LDC Pharma, MRCT, MR where we screen, I think we sent 
around 250,000 uh, compounds to each of these uh, screening center. So the important point here is the fact that if on one of the target, AstraZeneca is, is, is no more interested by this target, this partner will be alone to pursue this project and also with all the partner. So they, they can use the AstraZeneca compound to, and then we can find different ways of collaborating, but they can live with the molecules. That's quite new. And so in summary of this wide right panel, uh, we try to, in fact, to increase the value of our compound collection. So we don't want to let our compound waiting inactive on, on the shelf. We want to increase the, their value of our two million compound. So on the, on the left side here, you see some strategy where we want to increase our chemical space coverage. So we have this initiative called Compound Bank that is an infrastructure that will fly soon where we will, that will able, enable academic groups to submit compound to be screened at AstraZeneca. What is important to mention, of course, that the, this academic group will remain the, uh, all the, will keep the full ownership of the compound and free IP. And uh, we have collaboration with ISCAM which is a DNA encoded library uh, platform. So we, they can screen billions of compound targets. So it's, we have quite good success with them. So we, we decide to extend the collaboration. We continue to synthesize our library to PharmaHon in China. There's this broad institute suggesting a library of compound with a complex structure with a high control of steroid chemistry. And, uh, we, and but I will go directly to this uh, AstraZeneca and Bayer collaboration. So I will try to not dilute and distribute uh, my talk around all these things, but just to focus on, on this in the first part of my talk. So first some uh, introduction about atropine screening, uh, not too long. Uh, so it's, it's HTS has remained one of the most important tools to, to discover new chemical equity to start a, a drug uh, discovery project. It's far to be the only one interesting, but it's still very really common. So we can, we, people report different success rates, so, but around, usually around 50, 60 percent, that's not bad. So uh, we can say that historically, the pharma company has been really protective about their screening collection. It's not something we want to show or to share with someone else, with, or especially with our competitor. But for the last few years, where people start to talk more about open innovation, pre-competitive collaboration, the mentality uh, start to change. And uh, especially in this case, I will show you between people from Astra and Bayer. So the the collaboration is called Boomerang. It was, was quite a conver controversial name. So people say it's completely the opposite. So it's some of, I will not spend time on this. <laughs> so, um, so it started in, in uh, 2010. It was supposed to last three years. But as it's, success, it's, there is, it's a successful uh, collaboration, we decided to extend to 2016. So it's still ongoing collaboration. You can also understand the real trust you need between the two partners. So the mechanism is summarized on this panel. So AstraZeneca nominate an HTS target, so optimize, prepare the assay, and send to buyer. They screen their collection on this, um, on this uh, assay, and they do the same. They nominate an HTS, they send to Astra. So all compounds stay at home, I would say. We, don't, we just exchange targets. Um, and uh, two things about uh, nominated targets. So we cannot nominate a target that show already some success internally. There is no point for us to increase the number of hits on a target, and to double the hit, for example, the number of hits. And also that the target should not be of interest for the other partner, um, because we, we want to have to reduce, uh, to. The, to don't have any conflict of interest. So the target should be orthogonal, I would say, to the portfolio of the, of the other partner. So at the end of this uh, process, we exchange series of compounds, active compounds, of course, on some target. And this happened 
recently on uh, a certain number of projects. So the, the, the system, I would say the, the process uh, is working. But after a first round of screening in two uh, 2010 or 11, uh, just on between, um, uh, it was not that successful. So and we as computational chemists, we were asked to, to add additional detail about the two screening collection. For example, trying to estimate the potential value of such cross-screening collaboration. Basically to answer the question, are we screening the same? Of course, we can easily answer intuitively to this question, but they wanted to have precise number. So at that time, we were not, it was in July 2011, we didn't talk so much about, we're not so open as today. So we have very strong limitation on the framework to satisfy our lawyers, is that we decide to exchange, to don't exchange any structure and don't review. So I've never seen a buyer compound. We decide to use molecular fingerprint as a blind representation of the structure. So it's, you see it's a fingerprint, to, to repeat again, it's just a string of, of bits, so one, one, zero, encoding the presence of the absence of certain feature in the molecule or certain atom or substructure. So it's completely not human readable, it's just for computer. And we claim, of course, to not make any reverse engineering. <laughs> but that's why we should do that. But we have clearly to mention this in the paper. And um, so at the time of the comparison, the two collections were looking like this. So 2.7 million compound for Bayer and 1.4 million for AstraZeneca. Today, just for your information, uh, it's 3 million uh, for Bayer, almost 2 million for, for AstraZeneca. So I will not read the, the slide here. I want to give three message, uh, three important message. So it's clear that these two companies has, have different history and portfolio history. So we, we might expect that there, are, there should be some complementarity in the biological space they cover with their compounds. Makes sense. And um, uh, also, the two companies made huge uh, investment in uh, designing and um, synthesize either internally or externally their, their own library of compounds. So this study are, are not based on purchasing compounds from external catalogs. So we are really a high ratio of proprietary compounds that are not available, first approximation, at any other place or any other pharma around. And of course, as I will, I did, I will not show any distribution of molecular weight and lipophilicity, but you can understand also that we are drug pharma uh, company. So, uh, so these compounds are really real medicinal, most of these compounds are were real compound in medicinal chemistry projects. So they are usually drug-like, lead-like, and to, to answer one of the comments I, I, I heard before, 99% of this compound does not, don't contain any reactive function and uh, Michael acceptor, they are proper, uh, they are really proper fish chem, they are not uh, reactive functions. So, so the, the two collections make sense for, for the other partner. So the, the comparison was done during the joint meeting, was done in Astra, in Mundal, in Sweden. It was supposed to, to be done in one day, so it was again the limitation. You arrive in the module, we run, we remove any files, and you go with the report at the end. Finally, with the time, we get more, some more, was more relaxed. We have finally three days. So of course, we didn't spend three days in the same room, but we, we go home. And, and uh, we have a lot of computer. I would tell you that for this today, we don't need so much computer uh, power. I think now a laptop, and we did this with another partner, a laptop is, is sufficient for such calculation. So but, uh, I will just present a part of, of this calculation. But what is sure is that it was really nice collaboration, a really nice discussion between the, the different scientists for the two companies. So uh, I will not give any details about the fingerprint, just to mention that we use this SCFP4 fingerprint. 
is just, I think, a very well established in late fracture. It's found efficient for vitreous screening, clustering. Uh, so it's a good one. And uh, just to, to access the similarity, we just have to know that we just combine this fingerprint, this non human readable fingerprint, using a similarity index that range from zero. As you can see, this value is really close to zero. These compounds are really different to one, which means that the compounds are really similar. So this slide was presented to higher manager. That's the reason there is four drugs. and two from Astra and two for Bayer, from Bayer to be politically correct. And so now, as, uh, Professor Raymond showed a very nice uh, way to, to visualize the chemical space, but we, we were really limited by the, the, the computer power and also the, the purpose of the study was to say, are we different or not? So to compare now the collection containing millions of structure, uh, we, we just use a simple uh, nervous neighbor analysis uh, also really well established for a long time in literature so nothing new here but you see that for example for the bio collection here it means that simply for every compound from the bio collection we just plot in this graph the similarity corresponding to this highest similar compound in Astra and you can have and you do the same for Astra so you can just put a limit at 0.7, above which the compounds is really to, to, to be part of the same series, to, to share the same core structure. You can put a limit at 0.6, not that similar, but still com common feature between the molecule. And you can see that distribution is on, both distribution are on the left part of this limit. So meaning that according this figure print, the two collection contains different uh, type of structure. So you see also this peak at one, which means identical figure print. By extension, we can see here identical compounds. And if we zoom on this, we see it's the green part here. So the two collection at that time has 144,000 compounds in common. So we, of course, we look at them. We didn't look, but we compare them to public domain database. We have access to, at that time, 50 to 55 million compounds in the public domain. I think all the lists that you show in the things, we are really all in the database. Was. So by uh, doing this, we, we, know, we observe that 95% of these compounds overlapping between the two collections are present in this co public domain collection. So uh, no worry. They are the one, in fact, uh, comes from the small subset of compound from compound acquisition. So to answer the question, are we screening the same? Is the answer is no. We are strictly screening four million strictly different compounds. So it's a three point three person uh, overlap. So again, some people say I expect this value to be lower. Some also the say higher. So just putting uh, computational chemists in the same room with computer, and you get a just precise number, precise idea of this. So it's not really uh, tricky. So just to add some biological relevance to this um, analysis, we compare on both collection to the GoStar database. So we have, if you are familiar with Campbell database, it's similar. So it's a collection of million of compounds annotated to, with uh, biological activities. Um, and I, I will not explain this line. I always need several minutes. Uh, I, I will just conclude uh, to say that by doing this comparison, we, we just observe a synergic effect in the way that to, the compounds from the two collections uh, are similar to different parts of this, bio, uh, to this bioactive space as defined by the GOSTA database. And in summary, I will just keep the first two. It's really fresh. I just say this. But I will just repeat it that uh, in this uh, process, we just double the size of our screening without having to acquire compound. We have directly a access to compound at first appro approximation. Makes sense uh, for a drug discovery project. So now we go to the second part so of the talk and, and the last. Oh, and, um, 
So we see we can already uh, get useful information using simple, not human readable fingerprint, but is we can access much more useful information if you look at the, uh, uh, if you can access the structure. So, and uh, we have also a similar exercise where instead to compare fingerprint, we, we make uh, calculation around the structure, but we try also to come up with a, a, an operative model that we, we can use uh, for the collaboration is this one. In fact, we can uh, in, uh, prepare uh, a protocol of analysis that we can send to a partner and the partner uh, do the same. And we did this, and I, I cannot mention the name of the company, but uh, and, uh, it, did, uh, we, uh, it, it, it went well. So we analyze all the, this result, we discuss, so we ex simply also exchange the report so it's completely open. Uh, so two things about the calculation. So you see here there is no interactor property uh, issue because the compounds stay within the firewall of the, the two companies. There is no issue, no limitation in CPU time. The calculation can take two, two days, three weeks, we don't care, but not six months otherwise. Um, so, but if you see that there is a limitation of, of the platform we use because, of course, AstraZeneca cannot send a software to a partner uh, that doesn't have any license for this software, we will we be in trouble. So it's, there are some less flexibility there. But the goal of this preliminary report is that we can see uh, already if the, all the partner collection can be interesting for us, can be small or big companies, but. Uh, and also, anyway, we decide, yeah, it's a good, uh, we can have a good match. Uh, we will have also a more productive face-to-face. -face. It's then like in, in the buyer case that it, was, it went well, but we start from scratch. So here we already, we know already where to look at more precisely. So uh, we, we did a current exercise, as I say, and uh, we did this in pipe and pilots. So usually, most of the drug company have pipe and pilots. It's a really powerful package in terms of calculation, but in terms also of reporting, which is good in this case. So we, we send this protocol to a partner. It, it runs. I think it takes only one overnight. It generate 27 pages, whatever, of a nice uh, graph and profile on this. And this is a table of content we have so far, but we, we plan to, uh, to, to increase um, the, the, the name. And uh, for example, of course, the FISCAM, the things that you, you cannot uh, make without. Molecular weight, log P, there's so much information already there. So we not, uh, so of course, things about substructure matching, uh, ionic, so is this how many acid, how many bases, how many this kind of acid, things like that. Um, so we are open to, to, to send this information or collection to a partner. So a few years ago, I would not be able here to say just the number of screening compounds we have. So time change. And uh, so I will not, uh, I will not, how many minutes I have? A few? Okay, it's good. But I will not go through all of this. So I, I just select one topic for which we, we put more and more attention. And uh, I think the, the last speaker will see, uh, insist in, in, the, in that way. The, it's uh, the complexity. Uh, molecular complexity is something we really take a lot of care when we look at external catalog or other partner collection. And this comes from uh, this article but from Wyatt, but there are many articles from other groups that uh, put their contribution in, in, this, in this field, is that uh, usually the uh, um, they, they, they show that a simple parameter like the fraction of sp3 which are calculated by is corresponding to the ratio between the number of carbon in sp3 hybridization divided by the total number of carbon so it is really easy to compute you can compute uh, on your page oh it's me so I'm see maybe a mistake but uh, it's also very easy to interpret and they really show that there is a correlation between this, uh, an increase in this uh, uh, fraction of SP3 and the success in drug dev development. So, and this is just the distribution of the fraction of SP3. You can look at it. 
but I will not comment in the absolute for, for the AstraZeneca collection. So I will not comment in the absolute uh, way this distribution. Just to say that if we s compare, if we look at all, all the collection from another companies that where there are compounds that could help us to move distribution to the right, we might be more interested by such partner. Another way was already show in the previous uh, uh, talk, it was uh, Professor Raymond Yu's new fashion uh, was uh, really uh, popular also. <laughs> so really, th these things is really used a lot at this moment. It's just, it's a very nice way. So I will not uh, repeat everything, just you print, you, if you calculate the principal moment of inertia of a molecule, it ends up somewhere in this triangle and the three corner is uh, linear, spherical, or disk um, uh, compound. And this author also studied this, uh, the, the, the shape of the target, the protein target, using crystal structure. And they say that there are quite some pockets, uh, a lot of pockets that would like to have something, a compound that will be more in the middle of this triangle. So this is the, the, the plots for AstraZeneca, you see is as I think other companies they are shifted to the right, uh, to the left. So, and, and this is just collection wide, the one, the, the part that we are talking to at this moment, it, they show a, a slight shift. If we use this, just this simple sampling of this space, you see they are trying to move, they move a little bit to the right. So it's, it's since low number, but, uh, this collection is so big that it represents 100,000 compounds. So we might use this simple way to maybe already have a kind of signal of this compound. This, this is my, this compound should be more interesting. We should have better, more precise look on them. And uh, a last example, always connected to molecular complexity, but we can find literature, all the techniques. and. and and we, the last uh, presentation, we have some, some other example. But it's a, it's a natural product likeness uh, model. It's a reimplantation of the work from Earl, from Novartis. He used a dictionary of natural products and a, a collection of very synthetic compounds. And he derived, he used a Bayesian modeling to derive uh, a classification model where um, the natural product will, will has go to the right um, as a score that go to the right of this plot and the synthetic compound to the left, simply. So, and we see here the, the distribution for AstraZeneca and for the same partner, collection Y, and you see clearly a clear shift to the right. Uh, so this, this zone here, this area can contain compound for which we, we, we can find more interest. And when uh, we, we show this, we discuss uh, on telephone conference, we say, oh yeah, but that's right. We make investment, good investment in the recent year to extend our natural product space of our collection. Oh, it's good to have also the number to, to be. So I think in summary of this, and uh, so we put an infrastructure to, to profile uh, other partner collection, and then we don't exchange any structure and uh, it's quite, uh, I would say, comprehensive, so we put a lot of things, but uh, what I want to say, more, yeah, so really useful for, but again, here, we didn't e co uh, compare the two collections together, we just derive a view, or separate, uh, separate view on the two collections, so we still need to, to meet, and to see really the, the real potential at the end. But this kind of uh, infrastructure can help already to, to, have, to ask the best question when we meet. And, um, okay. and I say we have a strong uh, interest of finding new methods and we are able to, to collaborate with groups that will help us to, to find a still better way and improved way to, to analyze this, uh, to have a better idea what is the druggable chemical space. And as Acknowledgement, I will. I would like for the first part of my talk to thank all these person. So we just mentioned Kisi Rich and uh, Ben Caldo is the person from Astra and Bio that working in fact 
coordinating the activity around the screening, so they're working end to end. This person, uh, Jens, Niklas, Gerk, Nick, were more like me, implicated in the collection analysis, but really the person that created this uh, cross screening uh, collaboration is Peter Grizzly, Gerk, User, and others. So I'm just the reporter of this uh, collaboration here, anyway. So in this person, I would like to thank you also uh, for their contribution to the second part about the collection metrics, I would say, of, of my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Thierry. I, th I think that's a, it's a fascinating analysis of the compound collections and what we can learn from looking at them. I think uh, in an era when everybody's trying to work together more and collaborate more. It's wonderful to see pharmaceutical companies doing this as well and maybe providing some tools that may be of use not just for pharma projects but for DNDI and, and organisations like ourselves. So, so thank you. And I'd thank like you. to invite questions. Thank you very much for your presentation. Can I ask you more about the Bayer Astra uh, collaboration? So with Bayer with 2.7 million unique compounds and Astra having 1.4, no doubt when you selected your targets, Bayer sent you targets that they had been unsuccessful with with their 2.7 million. So my question is, did they find hits coming out of your 1.4 and of course vice versa going back the other way as well? I see, yeah, uh, it's a good question. Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I think I cannot say the, the name of the target. There. No, no, I was not okay, saying no, that. No, no, I'm not okay. saying that. But today is 1.9 million. But uh, the issue when we analyze the collection is uh, we also notice that bio has more combinatorial type libraries. So they are more big cluster in their collection. So yes, they are bigger collection. But in terms of diversity, the AstraZeneca is more being a smallest cluster. So I've, I would say, approximately, they are, in terms of uh, different type of chemistry, they are, uh, they are covering different, uh, uh, the same number of cluster of okay. unique uh, type of chemistry. You see, okay. So, so even if it's much more bigger, they are more redundant compound in one way or the or of this. Uh, if we can uh, discuss that with you, of course, can be useful for other reasons, but for to. Exploring chemical space, there might some a redundant compound there, guys. So, is this answer your question? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> so again, well, question, what, I'm, what I'm asking is, uh, I'm assuming that Bayer had already screened their 2.7 millions against a particular target. Yes. They gave you that target. Did you find hits with your 1.4 million that, that they that, yeah, yes, that they we, didn't we in terms of ability to work on and produce leads? So what, what the way it happened is the fact that uh, they screen. <coughs> They screen their collection, yeah. and they say, okay, maybe it's not successful because chemist doesn't want to, to start this uh, uh, project with right. this series. So it's also an information that they say to Astra. We don't f want to find aminopiperidine for this kind of target. We don't find, because this we, we found, we have, and we are not interested to pursue this. Mm -hmm. So they also give to the AstraZeneca chemist some idea about what the they, they buyer don't, don't want to see in the final screening as it, you see? Okay. So they are already an exchange, a discussion oh. at the chemistry level okay. about what we expect from, mm. from the order. Okay. Can I ask how many targets you exchanged? Uh, I, think, I think it's based, the project is stayed three per year, and I think they, 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 they um, <coughs> They keep the, 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 the number. Okay, so three, thank you. Three target exchange per year. Is this okay. Does it actually led to a, an exchange of molecules, or, or is it just um, a change in chemistry that, that you're now pursuing a different scaffold, maybe? So with this, at the screening, we don't exchange any structure, but the series are exchanged, and also the protocol of chemistry. So we are really exchanging more than just uh, the, the structure of the paper, also the way to synthesize the compound. So it's really a, a collabor nice collaboration. So the access to really the, the chemistry uh, protocol or all the data that could help them to, to, to start in a, in a good way the project. Okay, so it's more, more ideas than anything else. 
Hmm? It's more ideas in terms of the way you go about the chemistry. Um, it's no idea. The, 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 you see the, the structure and the, the and the, the way to synthesize. And uh, um, I, I need to really check to be really to ask you a question. So maybe you can to see if they really send the sample. That that was this exactly your question. Uh, I would say yes, but I'm not sure. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I would say yes. Makes make, makes sense, but I, I'm not sure. Hi, uh, Stacy Canan from Celgene. I'm here. Yep. Um, I I'm have a philosophical question, I think, unless you think you can give me a concrete answer. Um, a couple speakers have shown space that isn't occupied yet by synthesized molecules, natural product-like space or sphere-like space. And is it not occupied yet with chemical matter because that matter is not accessible? And is the matter that we eventually make in that space going to be drug-like? Um, I think so. I think a lot of person can give a, a different answer. I, I, I will. So we probably we are interested by something real we can get in screen. Uh, that's for sure. Um, and also we, they have also a lot of real compounds that are completely inactive. I think uh, Pfizer, Novartis published that, that a uh, high percentage, something like 50 percent of the collection are inactive after have been screened a lot of time. So we can report a similar number. So I think the, the, uh, the issue would be to, yeah, it's, I think it's a really c no problem. So we, we want to get more and more structure to feed our HTS, but we really want as I try to, to show at the end, to really have a better understanding about where we can find active compound and for for new target. It's also, and uh, the, maybe another way to answer the question, the fact that we are continually enriching our collection with new type of, of compound that are not necessarily of first interest for an ongoing project, because we want to prepare our collection for the coming targets, so the new target. So it's always a part of the budget going for that. But at the end, the type of structure are, are really, um, uh, should be really different to what we have already. So it's, we try to work as a, 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 to increase diversity over the, the time. So. And chemis chemistry says sometimes you, you create new chemistry space because you work hard in a project we have a difficult target, and you find an active, an active compound and you rebuild around, you can call this a new chemical space. So we don't have any way, that, uh, any way to understand that this was somewhere and you just have to go there. So we, you just uh, have it and you then e explore that way by going it to it. Yes. One last question. Yeah. Uh, I just had a question on whether, given the size of the database that Professor Raymond showed, whether these results are, are surprising or statistically different from what you'd expect from just randomly sampling two lots of two million compounds from within the sort of highly colored space on the, on, on the sort of the map that Professor Raymond showed. You know, is, are, are these two collections more similar than by chance, more different, or just what you'd expect? We didn't uh, use this map at that time and uh, and uh, but we when we wanted to publish this we have a similar comment for one of the reviewer and uh, we say if this because it's just a figure print you are very not close but you're just close it's not at the two collection like this or just different like this you see what i mean yeah. so and uh, we we what we did with the data because it was too too uh, too late to um, to compute new data. We have already removed any any file, anything. So it's not possible. We find a way to use what we have compute. The way we use, is he, 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 I think he answered this question. We we try to take any compound from Astra and we take the neighbor of the neighbor of the neighbor. So we say above a certain limit, 0.7. Okay, similarity 70 person. And say AstraZeneca. Okay, and we build and. Get, we, we call this galaxy of compounds. So we, and we see how many galaxies are purely Astra compounds. 
Then it so means that you, oh, maybe it takes more time, but take, uh, take, so you take a compound, you take neighbor of neighbor, like in maybe in Facebook, you have your friend of the friend of friend, at the moment they stop. You have every friend in your, in your network, have, explore all the friends, and you have a complete a galaxy. Then you, you need to, to make a big jump to go to another network, you see? Mm -hmm. And we notice that a lot of, lot of uh, uh, galaxies were strictly Astra, and the others were uh, strictly uh, Bayer. So in this, I even with this kind of uh, things, we could show that this tends to be more la like this. Is this? Okay, I think, I think we should move on. So please uh, join me in thanking Thierry again for a lovely talk. Thank you.